Hi, everybody, again. All right, so we're moving on to the next seminar, which is after crop ear care with Dr. Kay Bacchus and Dr. Lexi Laporte, who is in the obedience ring. So she won't be here, but uh, Kay is going to take it on. All right, all thanks. Right, it's all yours. Thanks, that's really loud. <laughs> um, yeah, and so if I kind of stumble a little bit, um, we were sharing pictures, and Dr. Laporte put the presentation together. So um, anyway, it's kind of a demonstration as well. Um, and we do understand that you people in the audience know as much or more about it than we do, than the vets do. Um, but if you, like us, are doing aftercare with ears, um, you run into all sorts of problems, um, all sorts of situations um, that can happen. So if there's anything we wanted to do today, um, as far as just takeaway, is that there's, no, there's always more than one way to skin the proverbial cat, right? There are lots of ways that people, and people are very creative in how they post their ears, their aftercare. If you end up with live ears that stand, and are basically symmetrical, that is a successful way to do it. Um, circumferential bandaging with vet wrap um, should never be tightened. I go so far as uh, when my individual single pet patients go home, we often have this wrapped around the cup. This is vet wrap, coban, or athletic tape. And we take it off, and then we put telfas on our ear incisions and put a little sock on, and then we show this to the person the pet person and we say, see this? If you put this on your ears, your ears will die and fall off. And then we throw it away. And then we go, never, 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 never use it. And then we throw it away. Because we've had several people do that. I literally do that. I'm like very dramatic and you know, it's like, don't do that. Yeah. Only healthy skin can be covered. I think we know that. But there's a chance where we're like, oh, we have just one little sore. Surely we can get them back posted up. Don't fall prey into that temptation or select a method of posting that allows that sore to be uncovered. Say you have a little extra sore on the edge, you know, maybe full post, the backer rod method is not the way to go. And so I would encourage everybody to have more than one way to post, alternating those ways so that you can avoid, say your full posts, your full backer rod post caused a little bit of moist redness down in the ear, go to half posts. Um, for the next time, for the next, for the next three to four days or five days between changing posts and let the bell breathe and you can go back and forth. And then when in doubt, this is always important, when in doubt, if you think that there's moist dermatitis or there's some questionable skin or some bruising, kind of you take that ear, you take that posting off and the tips of the ears are just a little reddened, don't repost them. And when in doubt, always give them a chance to breathe, just in case that that reddening is a sign that you've got some bruising and some partial, this is partial, um, you may have had some, the, just a slightly bit too tight. So I guess I should have put my stuff up here. Okay. So immediate post-operative care. So this is, a, this is one right at surgery. This is just finished. Okay, so notice how the edges are not swollen. They're not red and they're not thickened. This is a pet length crop seven days later. This is normal healing. Those ears are not swollen. They're not red and they're not thickened. Seven to 10 days later, waiting for suture removal. That's the ideal. We shouldn't have thick, red, weepy, moist ear edges seven to ten days later okay so that's what we that's what we'd hope to these are obviously two different dogs this is this was a fairly short pet crop this is a nice kind of show length crop so allowing the ears to breathe during healing is very important i tend to send my patients home in a cup with a sock for the first 48 hours to me the sock provides a little bit of extra protection to the cup for the first 48 hours where the puppy suddenly learn, you know, figures out he's got six inches of higher clearance on the top of his head and there's a lot of shaking. And I think the sock does a good job of one, protecting that, adding a little bit of cushioning and protecting the cup and also kind of wicking away any drainage. The cartilage will drain and seep a little bit and it's nice that a stockinette or a sock kind of can suck that up a little bit. So when you take it off, 
and let the ears, the rest of the wheat go like this, what's what you want is a nice dry ear edge and 10 days after surgery. Okay, so common post-up taping, taping techniques. Um, a lot of us like the cup. You can tape them over the head, which is quicker and faster. Um, some people may use a rack, such as this wolf rack. I don't know how many people remember old Dr. Wolf uh, that patented the wolf rack in 1987. So we have these. I'm sorry. That's why I think she stood over there because of it. Well, I can't, I can't, um, I can't advance the thing if I do that. I'll just try not to move. Okay, so again, oops, that was the wrong direction. So here, this is a very common, common technique. Um, I'm not going to be able to advance the slides. Do you want to stand up here and advance the slides, D? Or touch any of this stuff till afterwards. Um, so these puppies have the cup on. What's nice about the cup is it, one of the advantages of it, it's, it's probably its biggest disadvantage is it takes a few minutes to put on after surgery. Your puppy needs to be asleep while it's on or, or very, still, very, still, still recovering from anesthesia because it's difficult to get on while the puppy's awake. So it takes a good 10 minutes to, cut, to put on. Um, the, the ears have to be cleaned and dried. They should be cleaned and dried after the surgery anyway, but they need to be bone dry. So um, it, we stretch the ears up on the cup, which I think does a lot of nice things for healing. So when it's healing, the cartilage is not wrinkling. When tissue heals, it wants to contract, and so if you ever have them taped up and see them wrinkle, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not going to ruin your ears. But you're going to have to stretch those ears. The, putting them on the cup does that for you. Most of the breeders that uh, Dr. Laporte and I work with will leave that cup on, even after the sutures come out in seven to ten days, if the cup is sturdy and still well glued on, and and wait until you know smelling it every day, checking it every day, till it's almost falling off. So when we say encourages aesthetic healing, it doesn't allow that wrinkling to happen. So if you get that nice all healed up look and get the sutures out, a lot of times they come off the cup. They often have a little bit of moist redness on the haired side, but they often just need four or five days down and they're ready to go into posts. If everything we talked about with posting is true. Next slide. So the Paisley style ear tip, um, Dr. Laporte wanted to let you guys know that that is something that is done on the cup and you just have to not tape over that tip up there. We typically leave like a little suture there, one little suture that's tied into the cartilage very tightly and let it heal and make a little bit, of, it'll heal around it. So we don't, I don't get a lot of requests for the paisley tip, I call it wing tips um, ear anymore. I do occasionally and what I do is leave that open and put one suture there right they're really tight, whereas the rest of the sutures we put in, I try and just go skin to skin and not go into the cartilage because I don't, I don't want my cartilage to heal smooth without those little fibrous bullets that you sometimes feel if, the, if you're going through the cartilage. You have to go through the cartilage down here when you're reattaching the skin to the base, but up here I'm trying to go skin to skin. So I'll put once if you want a paisley tip, that's about how the cupping is done. So next style, next uh, slide. Another one that is ears wrapped over the head. So here's a dough with ears wrapped over the head. You can see the edges are exposed. So that's going to heal successfully. Can it, it can breathe. You can also pull on it and kind of stretch the ears a little bit, even though while they're taped. So that's a fine way to do it. Um, every once in a while, you'll get a request for this. This is obviously not a Doberman. It's a it's a bully, um, and they wanted this provides a little bit of mild compression, but even on the short-eared crop breeds, it tends to really lend lend to the pockets the over the head so but it was a mild mild a compression take it off in 24 hours um, I like this better than this oops it did it it did it myself that time so this is a wolf rack um, and that's what this is here it's probably gonna squeal as I get closer so it starts off at this little plastic rack um, tongue depressors are taped to it so before it goes on the puppy's head, it looks like that. This is an old fashioned thing. They used to be, you may have, if you've been around long enough, you've seen them in metal and wire or something similar. So literally it sits on the puppy's head. 
the ears, you put a piece of tape up the ear, the ear then is, the tape is brought up and over the post. You have to be very careful not to take the ear all the way up and over because you'll kill it with pressure. So the ear shouldn't go any further than right there, but that tape comes up and over and you just lock the tape in. You can do a little bit of taping on the side. And then it, what's nice about that is then this is all exposed. All of the edges, the bell is open and breathing. And it requires though, otherwise the puppy will turn it like this on its head. Once it gets loose, he'll do this and it'll still be attached to the ears. So I take a one inch roll gauze and I just crisscross it under their chin. And that's what the, to me, that's what the puppy dislikes is the crisscross under the chin. They'll be scratching at that. And that's to me the first thing that fails, but it's easy to replace. Um, typically a wolf rack for me will last five to six days. And that's checking every day. Every th time you post anything, you should be checking, feeling it, smelling it, smell both ears every day. Any signs of brown staining or any smell, one of the best detector is your other dog. If the other dog is licking the ear consistently, there's a sore under there. I bet you a whole dollar, okay? Okay, the sponge or the pool noodle, very much, very close to the cup. And just our, our issues with them, they can be used immediately for aftercare while the sutures are in, and they can also be used as a posting method. Um, so our biggest problem is it just seems that they, that they are difficult to keep on long term. So, but again, if that's what you have and that's what works for you, that's, that's great. Okay. So then after, after um, crop day, the next day, your puppy should be normal in 24 hours. Actually, I've had a, a breeder send me a video of the puppies the same day, that evening of, having the zoomies in her house. Um, so, you know, it, they should be, they're gonna be waking up, being more and more alert, but they should pretty much be back to eating, playing, and fighting with each other you know, within 24 hours. That can be a problem with posting to some degree um, with the cups in that I always like to have a bottle of uh, what they call bitter apple or the another brand of it is yuck. I wouldn't spray the puppy's ears, but if you wanna either spray the sock or soak a cotton ball and lightly dab the taped part of the ears, just don't spray it on the incision so that it's litter mates when they lick that are getting a nasty taste instead of like you know, being able to fight with each other. Um, it's also important, I feel, that if the entire litter's cropped, they can mostly be together if they're monitored, but if there's one that's not cropped, um, they probably shouldn't be in there. They're not as respectful to the other puppies. They're not hurt, they're not tender, and they can really go after those ears. So just some other things. So anesthesia is completely worn off, um, and depending on how you want to manage them, some people will manage them the first couple days by themselves, or you know, a lot of times some of your breeders are sending them home after that. Some breeders keep them until the sutures are out and they're ready to be posted. Good for you. Um, I, you know, it's always appreciated that you can help your puppy buyers with that. And it's a lot of extra effort on your part. So a lot of effort. And by that point, you know, you're really tired of puppy poop, even though they're adorable at that age. But it, it does, you know, you do get tired of puppy poop. So normal eating and drinking expectations, they should be up and eating within that first 24 hours. Usually, I mean, ours are up and eating in an hour or two. They want, about an hour after anesthesia, they're ready for a snack. And so we always have little Caesars packets. We call it puppy smelling salts. And we'll open up that. And even if they're half asleep, they will be like, ooh, and they'll get up and eat for us. And they just seem to settle. Once, they, once they've had something in their tummy, this is the first time these puppies have ever been fasted in their life since the day they were born. And they are very stressed by this. And just getting them a little bit of something to eat if your pain management is good, our puppies tend to go back into napping. And that to us is like, okay, these puppies are pretty comfortable. They're just so hungry, they just can't, they're, they just are in a panic. Okay, oops, all right. Um, this actually does advance them, Dee. So you're just sitting here with the model. Um, I didn't know it would. So minor sores, um, different types of posting, all sorts of things you can try. I've got a whole bunch of stuff up here and we'll go through this quickly and then we can all talk about the different things that may have worked for you and share with the group. Um, but if you're having issues with sores, of course they have to breathe and you cannot post over sores. Don't cover up sores. If you need to put a little bit of triple antibiotic ointment on it, if it's been moist, you might try then a powder to make it dry. Um, some people have had luck shaving the ears if that seems, if the tape has seemed to be pulling on the hair. I've not had that issue with anything other than a hairy, a hairy breed like a giant schnauzer or a mini schnauzer where 
really good shaving before the ear crop itself helps with the bandaging aftercare and beginning of posting. And for those breeds, which um, keeping them, they have to be absolutely shaved during the, the matura maturation process or that heavy hair will pull those ears down. Not our problem, thank goodness. Okay, so appearance during healing. Once again, these are, you know, almost sutures out the day after, four or five days later, seven to 10 days. They should never be really red and swollen. They should be, if we, we've done, this should nice and good intention, first intention healing because they're out and breathing. And see, they're not, they go right down to looking almost like a normal ear edge in just a few weeks after surgery. But when you get those sutures out, they'll be a little thickened, but it should not be horribly swollen, horribly red or moist and gooey. That's not normal, okay? So common posting methods. I recommend everybody start with the backer rod method with our puppy buyers, with our puppies. We do a lot of pets, first time pets. Um, those people need a lot of hand holding. They need a lot of coaching. They need a lot, every once in a while, they're called, you're having trouble, and you just have to rah, rah, you know, cheerlead them on, tell them everything is fine. What do we like about this picture I took off the internet, but this is, what I like about this posting here, this full, uh, the full end of the bell um, post, like what this puppy has on, is with that soft bridge, they can exercise their muscles. They can pull those posts up. So that's the advantage of the full, full backer rod post is that with a tape bridge, you can, you can do 10 and two, 11 and one, but if you give them slack, when they see a squirrel go by or another dog, they can go, ooh. So they're exercising those forehead muscles. I'm sure you guys have all taken off like a half post or an, another type of posting method that locks them in and they don't really move them for a while. In about 15 minutes, they start doing that again. They're exercising those forehead muscles. But, and then this is the zip tie method. Um, not used until the bell is set. So if, if it's young enough in the process or during that adolescent phase when you take them out and they immediately go back down to Rottweiler and it's so disheartening, um, it's really for once the bell is set and you're doing this. So I tell my clients, our goal is Batman. When you first take them off, you're gonna be Rottweiler and halfway in the middle, you're gonna be Baby Yoda <laughs> or the Flying Nun, depending on your age, your generation. <laughs> If you know who the flying nun is, okay, um, and anything short of Batman needs to be posted. I'm not really landing an airplane, it just looks like it. But I do that in the exam room. And, and so, but the, the, the zip tie is nice in that you do get a lot of ear breathing and the edges. And of course, there's the fun thing, you can decorate your posts for holiday season. For your holiday puppies, you can put little ghosts on them, blinking lights. I've seen people put blinking lights on them. Now those little LEDs are real light, little tiny lights. You can put a battery pack on the collar and just go to town. So, but again, I think the, back, the backer rod method is really kind of the foundation method of posting. Most of you guys use it. Um, full versus half. These are both full. And then here's a half post. See how the bell is open? And this is a piece of backer rod bridge, um, which brings me into when you guys get um, the pockets where the ear is kind of bending down like this and then going over. So if the right ear is pointing to the left, that's a pocket. There's two ways that I know to deal with it, and you guys may have other good ideas that you can share with everybody on the, um, on the pocket, is that you do a full post with a bumper added right where that ear meets the forehead, and it kind of pushes it out. But another thing that I have found works fairly well is to do half posts like that but instead of putting them at 11 and one or 10 and two, put them way out like this, like a bull, like, you're, like the, the make the puppy look like it's a bull in the bullfight ring. Because right at the ear, forehead interface, you're bending that cartilage the other way. Instead of like this, you're bending it that way. And so try four days of the half post method with them pull, pulled out like at nine and three and see if that doesn't help. R remember that it'll support the cartilage, the cartilage is not folding, but see if that doesn't help your pocket. Because I've seen it help um, kind of a stubborn pocket actually really pretty well. And remember, pockets need to be dealt with as soon as possible. If you leave them, they will become permanent. Okay, so the half post, you use the same backer rod and it sits on that little knob of cartilage, that big knob that you see on the dog's ear, that's actually called the antihelix. It doesn't matter, you can call it the knob, the shelf, whatever. 
but it sits right there and you still want to pull that ear up onto the post. So, okay. zip tie, very user friendly um, and is very good at encouraging a straight ear shape. A lot of people really like that. I think it's easy too. I, you know, I kind of tailor on if we get requests, uh, we do do posting at the clinic where I do my crops in Tulsa. Um, but then we also recommend Doberman Ear Taping Methods, the original Facebook group, and Doberman Ear Taping um, and Posting Facebook groups. They have good videos on this, and I, I really do encourage our pet, our individual pet owners that this is their first time to join those groups and to watch those videos because they're really well done, and they're, they're policed by the people that, you know, the administrator of the sites. Um, so they do a good job of for the most part, getting all of those. And they do a really good job on questions. So people that are join the group, you might consider having your puppy buyers join those Facebook groups because you'll see that they, overall, I think they get good advice. Um, there's some hokey stuff on there. People are like, what dog food do you feed? You know, that sort of stuff. And you, but you'll also see some terrible train wrecks on there. Um, often veterinary cause, which is really disappointing. Um, just ears that right at surgery are just bandaged like the animals had a head injury. And you're just like, what kind of moist, rotten, infected mess are they going to see when they take that off in four days? Or, or yeah, I was just about to say, I've, I've seen it on that website, on that Facebook group where they said, don't take this off for two weeks. And I'm like going, they're not going to have ears in two weeks. And that's really a shame. So um, part of our thing with the ear cropping is do not have your peppy buyers assume that their veterinarian knows anything about ear cropping, can help them, or is trustworthy in posting ears in a method that will not kill them. And that's really sad. I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're trying to fix that the best we can. So, um, you know, prolonged healing, we already talked about this. You know, every once in a while you come across a puppy that's having an allergic dermatitis to the glue of the tape. It could be the turbot glue, it could be the adhesive on the tape, it could be the sutures. Sutures are really pretty easy, typically they're coming out in seven to ten days, so by the time you notice you've got a suture reaction, it's pretty much time for the sutures to come out. Okay. So here's a little bit, this is sutures that were removed too early. Remember the sutures are designed to lay the skin back over the cartilage, the back side of the ear, and put it back, and we want a, a natural, normal looking ear edge when it's all healed up. So if you take it off too early and it's, the, it's not, the healing is not complete enough to hold that together, it can just let go. And then it's gonna have to heal by second intention. So here it is initially, here it is partly healed, but look, it did heal. It healed beautifully. So it did go ahead and heal. All right, and then this is, this is our worst case scenario. I don't know if you can see here, but the ear ends right there. This is a piece of dead leather Here's the other ear. Um, every once in a while, and this is the veterinary side of the complaints. You were complaining about veterinarians that, you know, do an ear crop and then wrap it up like a, like a head injury helmet and then, or don't know how to post or use the wrong stuff. This, is a, this was a client that had done this before, knew what she was doing, did not listen to anything we said, do not put it with another dog, do not let them lick the ears, the exposed ears. This was a single puppy with adult dogs so when they brought it back at seven to 10 days, the ears were swollen and red. They were so red they couldn't, my, my vet tech couldn't get the sutures out. And we put her on antibiotics. Um, I wasn't there because I'd just come into crop. She handles the vet that's there and the vet tech handle a situation like that. Because usually it's just a quick suture removal. They don't need anything but a suture removal. Um, we said, you know, you've got to get them on antibiotics. Do not, you know, keep this dry. And she just, she knew what she was doing. She's not going to listen to us. She posted those red, raw, swollen, infected ears. And when she pulled the bandage off a week later, she doesn't have ears. So, um, you know, it happens. There's both sides of the equation need to be reasonable, need to try and listen to each other, um, if at all possible. So what did you do? There was nothing to do. There's nothing left. Um, you know, that was the, the inflammation, if you'll see there, the inflammation and infection is really gone because the tissue that was part of it is dead. It's just, you know, the body has, the body is sloughing this off. There was a little bit of infection, a little bit of thickening here, but it was not, the, the infection was over because the ear, the ear part that was infected had lost viability and had died. So you just took it down to a military Yeah. No, I didn't recut that. I, you know, nope. She didn't want us to do anything and we were like... So, they see ya. I mean, she already wasn't listening to us. 
she wasn't really combative, but she, you know, and she was upset, and she had every right to be, and it, to her defense, she didn't blame us because she knew she had done that. We just mildly said, yes, we asked you not to do that. Yes, there's nothing, you know, we did let her know if there's anything, if you want us to try and clean them up at some point in the future, let us know. We never heard from her again. So, I mean, that happens. It's just really unfortunate when it does. So, and I mean, you can get on the Facebook and, and just see all sorts of horror stories like this. And, you know, sometimes the people will blame themselves or whoever, but it's a mistake that's easy to happen. And, and what we try and do really is to try and help that first time ear cropper person who's first time poster, their first Doberman. We do a lot, ton of that. I don't know if you do a lot of that. Um, we spend a lot of time with them trying to help them be successful because if we can help those people be successful with their first backyard Doberman that they bought from you know, a person who has no pedigree, is doing no health testing, but they've always wanted a Doberman. This is, I hear this almost every other phone call. I've always wanted a Doberman. We finally convinced my husband, convinced my wife, whatever, to get one and they're looking for help. And there's, that's how a lot of us started. If we can just get these people through that first posting, make them feel confident, we always tell them this is not rocket science. There's just a few things you have to do, which is what our points were in that very second slide, the take home points, okay? Which we're almost to. Um, this is a finer detail. Um, this is dog halfway through, dog through. As you guys know, um, posting is not just slapping them into posts. And it's really hard to convince the inexperienced person how firmly they need to pull those ears up on that post to get that nice, straight, not bowed out look. Um, once I get my posts on the puppy, I actually, when I do my tape bridge, I actually, if this is the dog's head, you're a post now, if this is the dog's head, I pull the post up and I slowly, I rotate it just a little bit inward. So they're out like this, I rotate this one inward a little bit and this one inward a little bit to get that real straight. As I put my bridge on, I just rotate them a little bit. Because you want the leading edge of that ear, you want it to be straight like that. And that really seems to help. It's not a big twist, it's like just, a, just 10 degrees, 15 degrees. And it really seems to help when you put that bridge on. So this is what was done here. This dog has got a beautiful crop but it looks like it's got too much bell, but if it really doesn't, if they just rotate that in and really pull that ear up onto that post and tell them it actually pulling it much firmer than you think you have to, you're not gonna hurt the puppy, and really encourage them, this is what the outcome is, that's just stunning, that's a beautiful crop, nice flat bell, just the way it's supposed to be. I think the point of that one also is just to have maybe examples of puppies that you might own or breed and have adult dogs and try to convince and show your puppy owners that sometimes if the ears are standing, it doesn't mean that they're done yeah. for the most aesthetic outcome um, because a lot of people would have stopped posting this dog at that age because his ears completely stood all the time, but they probably would have slackened to either curve out or in, or they would have retained that really big kind of ugly, not flush bell look that she wants. Yeah, and this is, this, this is the same bell. This is not cut at all. It's, it's just a finesse, a finesse, fine detail. And I call it, when, when we're turning it in, I call it and pulling, pulling that ear firmly up on the post, but then when I do that little turn, I call it the tood turn, because you want that attitude. You know, when the, when the posting's all done and their ears are finally done, you want that, that Doberman attitude, that straight, straight ear look. So you're you know. turning it in, you're turning it in towards yeah, so if you can see the, the puppy picture, basically what's happened is that if you're posting the puppy and you're standing in front of them and you're doing backer rod, right. the kind of intuitive thing to do is to pull the ear on the back part of the backer rod and, and have the, the backer rod in back front here. of you, right? Right. Because you're kind of standing in front of the puppy. But what we're saying is to actually turn the ear closer towards like the midline of the puppy or actually rotate it towards the front part of their head because then once you untape that, the lax part then does that. This is my own dog when I was posting him here. I was probably just being lazy and I was pulling it up and I was looking at it straight on and posting them like that and they look like banana peels. Yeah, so they're in the ears and then you've got, them, you've got the ears wrapped. Mm -hmm. You know, the post is in the ear, the ear so is wrapped. So having the ear here, you, you actually want it. the ear to be here. You pull, and when you do this, you pull, see how my thumbs are here? If that's my bell that's sticking out, 
the bell that's sticking out here, here's the bell sticking out my thumbs, right? So if I rotate the ear in a little bit, a little bit, I'm kind of pulling him up and away. So it just, it pulls him back a little bit. Yeah, you're pulling it, but yeah, but when you pull the ear this way and up, it just, it, do, it does flatten them a little bit. So, I mean, I'm pulling, I pull the ear in a little bit and in a little bit, and it, it does, it's out, counter, counter, counterintuitive that you think I'm pulling them out, but it does bring them back, because you're getting the whole ear straighter this way. The ear's kind of rotated like this, so when you pull it in a little bit, it just seems to straighten it. No, no, it's, it's your, the, straight up, you're just rotating the ear a little bit inward toward the forehead. Yeah, if it makes any sense to like, if you're thinking about like, say like posting with a, a thinner backer rod, you'd almost want to position the backer rod towards the back part of the huh? puppy's ear as much as possible. Mm -hmm. and have more ear leather in front of the backer rod um, instead of more ear behind the backer rod as you're looking at your puppy. If you're looking at your puppy and you have more ear behind your backer rod, you're gonna get banana peels, like the other side. You know, they're gonna be facing you. If as you're looking at your puppy, you have more ear either in the middle or in front of the backer rod a little bit, you'll end up with a more aesthetic, kind of crisp look straight on. That posting was mostly achieved with backer rod, but a little bit in this side. So this, like yeah. this puppy has full posts on and has a really long crop. And what, this has actually got two pieces of backer rod making almost a paddle so that you have that support. So, but when I'm wrapping her, I just put a little, I just take a little bit, not even, this can't even be 10 degrees, but we're just towing her in a little bit. It doesn't bring the bell out, I know it feels like it ought to, but if you pull the, bit, pull the ear very up on there, and then we have the, the nice support with, the, since this is such a long ear, what she was saying, the ear sometimes creases on that outside toward the end, and you get that banana peel. We've got a kind of almost two, two backer rods here together to kind of support that ladder, the cut edge and keeping it straight. See, we don't address that on our video, but I do it naturally. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you a know, lot of people who really have a lot of experience are already doing the, that. The finesse to that. Yeah. yeah, this is like also for you guys to tell, be telling puppy people who are, don't, maybe don't have that like natural experience or you might have known that you were doing that 30 years ago and then you forget that people don't know they do those things. So. All right, sweetie. All right, so we're almost done, and we've got lots of props up here to go over. Um, lots of things I'm hooked to. Um, you guys have probably all used the, the, the Breathe Right strips. Get the extra strength. Extra strength generic is as good as the brand name, but they do require extra adhesive, so Turbot and, or Osteobond is really the way to go with that. They just won't stay on any other way. The adhesive that they come with is just not sufficient to keep those on. But it's a really good, at this stage, it's a really good way to keep those tips that are still just floppy from cycling and, and moving a lot. At this point, this, this, this pup is, I don't know if she's nine or 10 months old and she's almost done and these are just a little mm -hmm. floppy. And you can alternate between posting, taking it down, giving it a day's of rest, and then putting some zip ties on. So at that point, this puppy was like posted, day off, started to get floppy, do the breeze right nasal strips, they'll stay on for three to five days, take them down, day or two off. I mean, it was just toward the end when you start backing off and things are doing well, but as soon as those tips on those really long show crops start to get a little saggy and a little gelatinous out there, you want to get them to hold still. So what are you doing there, pup? If the ear leather is always thin, those will yes. weigh it down. We've mm -hmm. seen some that just, yeah. yeah, and you can, you you can do account post. for like differences in ear leather. So we try to have nice thin ear leather will stand quickly. If you have a heavier ear leather or a little bit more ear laterally or on the outside, you could do two breathe rights. So you could have one at the tip and then kind of one offset and that might also help to adjust. Yeah. So there's a and, few different. And I've done that as well, done two yeah. breathe rights on the ear. You sometimes may have to shave the hair inside the ear like you would for a show but you just do one and then the other one off center, just side down. So you get more of the inside of the ear is supported with a breathe right yeah. and not just the tip. So, um, but it's a good way, again, at this point, the puppies should be in, they're in serious maturation mode as far as that cartilage hardening off. You really want to get those tips to not be real flippy, real floppy. 
Uh, sometimes they're so thin it's really hard to, even as adult dogs are going to have some flippy floppy, but um, we're going to try and get them as firm as we can and support them as long as necessary. Um, are you, are you and typically doing it through teething period? Yes. What's, yeah. Your, yeah. what's your suggestion here? We tell, I mean, I tell every single puppy buyer, and I know Dr. Laporte does as well, is that everything's going great, you're getting, you're feeling like a rock star, and, um, you know, five months old, six, seven, eight, um, this, at six months, the, the big canine fang teeth start to come in, and the big molar in each, premolar and molar on each side come in. So the eight biggest teeth of this animal's head start coming in at six months. And when they come through the gum line, even when they look like they're full length, the root is still developing. So that's going on for months and months. Uh, if it's a big adolescent male, it just seems to be even slower to mature. So what you eating? Are you eating good stuff? Fine, good stuff. Okay. So, um, and we'll, we'll tell them, it's like, you're going to be feeling like everything is going really great, and this is super, we're going to be done by next week, and they're going to take the post off. The puppy is seven and a half, eight months old and they went, they were getting Batman for three to four days and they're really feeling good. Remember and, the oh, what you got? I guess I would just set puppy people up for the expectation that their ears mm-hmm. just aren't done until they're, they're just at not, least yeah. six to seven months old. So that oh, they're not. I'm tell them, I'm just, I'm yeah. just trying to know what, you know, because oh. so many people will just say, oh, it's done. And then you warn them about the teething. Well, what's that got to do with their right. ears? And they might be standing, but then you're going to lack some of that really aesthetic, like, straightness or, like, that nice tight bell because if people stop posting once the ears are standing, you end up kind of getting that, like, tip-out look, which right. some people are happy to have, but and, and, if you're trying to be, you know, as perfect as possible, then we want to, we want to be posting at least through seven months at minimum, and that would be for, like, maybe a shorter, like, medium length. Problem. Right, and I'm, I'm having people have their dogs fail at seven and eight and nine months. Yeah. And yeah. so especially, and even some that weren't as long show crops. And so um, I tell them a minimum of eight, possibly 10, and it could be longer and that you're done when you're done. And if you um, leave the post off too long, especially to past six months of age, you know, you go for several days and you leave them down and you don't put them up. If there's no reason not to put them up and you think, well, I'll do it. It's Thursday, I'll put them up on Sunday night before I go to work. Those two days of that mature, adolescent dog flopping around the yard with his ears cycling are going to either make the ears fail or, or delay the process of finally being done posting for months to the point of failure. And I've had several people do that. They'll just take them down on Thursday or Friday and not put them back up till Monday during that real crucial period. And I mean, I, I even on a medium length crop, I'm like, you're looking at eight months. I don't, I don't want to get them to, they might be done at six or seven, but I don't want to give them false hope. And I tell them, you know, it, that they're, and, and they may not be done, and that they might not be done until they're done. And if as long as they're not at Batman, they need to go back to posting. And so that might go on. Okay. So back to our first slide. Um, you guys have all, everybody does this a little different, and it's, it's, um, I always think it's fun how creative people are about how the different things they come up with with posting that works. If it works and it doesn't hurt the puppy, it's a good method. <laughs> Uh, just make sure that if you teach it to somebody else, you teach the, the different, you know, kind of quirks you have learned with it. Um, circumferential bandaging and, and only healthy skin can be covered. And that's, that's there's almost, there's no, there's no um, exception to that. You're going to run into trouble. You're asking for trouble if you're going to bandage uh, ears that have sores, raw spots, or any sort of infection. So when in doubt, let them breathe. There's a question here. Um, what do you, do you use on your freshly cut beard to, to, to triple antibiotic or anything? Um, on the cut, edge, like right after cropping. Sorry, there, can, can you? So the question, the question, the question, question is, is yep. The, the question is, what do we put on freshly cut ear edges? Okay. Um, and I think we're talking about like immediately the cut puppy's just been right. cropped. We're put on a cup or taped over the head, whatever method okay, you but went. As far as treating the suture yep. until they come out. I. I personally have had, um, I kind of go honestly with like almost like a wet to dry sort of approach. Most breeders I'm recommending that they either put an aquaphor or a triple antibiotic ointment on first. Um, and it's not because there's antibiotic, antibiotic uh, ointment, it's because it's an ointment. And so it's keeping the edges supple and that's why an aquaphor also works. 
but you have to use a little bit of logic in that when you do that, it can get a little bit like goopy. You know, if you live, you know, where uh, some of these girls live in Houston, you can get a lot of humidity. Um, and so you might be battling a little bit too much moisture. And so you have to use your common sense of that. Once you take a wrapping off, if they look like those ears are a little bit too wet, you need to back off on the amount of ointment you're using. And so there are some people who grab powders first too. And so that might be a little bit of a personal preference. I find that keeping the ear edge supple with like an aquaphor or any other um, petroleum based um, ointments will keep them supple enough so that you guys don't get frustrated taking the sutures out. So we, I also use a triple antibiotic ointment. I like the one with pain relief, at least initially, because I've actually seen the difference between just putting it on right after the surgery and then putting, before the puppy wakes up, putting the stuff with the pain relief on and then not putting it on. Because then we show the puppy owner in the exam room when they take the puppy home, how we would like them to treat the ears. We do recommend the triple antibiotic ointment with pain relief, and we're able to touch those ears very carefully and just show them. But we ask them to do no more than their first digit of ointment when they put it on to do both ears. So not to get excessive, um, but we, we typically don't have a lot of problems. We do tell them, you know, of course, the, the cup can't be wet. The, if it gets wet, you know, go out there with an umbrella, use the, the daisy press and seal plastic and make a little, you know, bonnet for your cup to keep it dry. And then of course, don't have another, you can't have another dog, a adult dog chasing that dog around, licking those ears and making them raw, wet and swollen, so. For our community water bowl is a great place for them to get wet because mm -hmm. they're drinking and slobbering. Water. Yeah, yeah. So I had some um, other things other up question, here. Yeah. Other questions? Scabs. Leave them alone, take them off daily, up her boat. Scabs. I'd, I'd leave them on. If they're not infected, if you look underneath it, the, the, the new skin cells are migrating underneath it, and scab is kind of Mother Nature's bandage. And every time you rip that off, uh, you see that real new shiny skin? That's very delicate. The scab, if it's not infected, it's normal healing. Um, if it's not draining anything, just leave it on. Um, we do recommend like the day of suture removal. Um, if the puppies are coming back to us, we do recommend to put a little bit of ointment. I just rub it on the ears to kind of get them moisturized. Um, we ask them to put a little tiny bit of ointment on the ears every day until sutures come out. But if they don't and they look dry, we'll put a little bit of ointment on there. Kind of get those that, again, keeping those ears supple, as Dr. Laporte said, really is really helpful and it helps get our sutures out too in a least traumatic way. So. I think if they come off when you're doing the ointment, that's fine, but don't go picking after. Yeah. And then another question over here. Over there. I, I just need to interrupt for two seconds. I found a lady's fanny pack. Her name is Nancy Burke. Does anyone know Nancy Burke? She just, she's not listed on the for a room, so I figure she's got to be sharing the room with someone. No? Okay, thank you. That's all I need. Sorry. Okay. So, and we had some other interesting things. This is from a Great Dane breeder. She call, it's called an Easy Rack. It's a homemade thing. These are, co these are coat uh, hanger ends. They're rubber, you know, she buys the rubberized coat. And this basically sits on the head. So the ear would be here. And again, just very much like the wolf rack, she's taping it over and taping the front and leaving the edges exposed. And she'll, she said these will last easily a week on her Danes. And, you know, they, she loves them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's, for one puppy, it's probably great. Uh, for a whole herd of puppies, you know, of course, you know, you've got, you're going to have other problems. So, it, you have to, you have to tailor um, to what, every situation that you're in. I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't put a whole herd of puppies in these either. But you know, if it's something, we have occasionally used this for a stubborn dog that just seems to be having reactions to tape and that sort of stuff. So, but it needs to be, it needs to be a little bit smaller for dope. <laughs> we just leave that alone. Yeah. Leave that alone. But anyway, this is, this is full posts with a soft bridge. We, t we turned it in a little bit and we used, since it's, since she's got a really long show crop, we put um, a second, um, a second piece of backer rod there to just support that lateral edge where they tend to, when they're making that banana slice to fold. So you've got it really straight. Um, and then, if you have never seen this tape before... Can you show on her again which way you're saying to turn Yeah. <clears throat> oh. 
So when you've got it, so just when, we, when I'm putting my bridge on, I just turn it a little bit in. Towards the, towards the, towards the midline. Each ear turns toward the midline just a few degrees. I mean, not even, not even probably five degrees. So I'm going to hang on to her for just a second. I don't, you don't have to hold her. But, um, she had, I just put full posts on her like two days ago, and so I'm probably going to take them off tomorrow. And if you live in um, those areas that do have a lot of humidity, where are these? I had this, and then I kind of was pulling stuff out. Um, this is a little bit messed up. That's okay. That is, that is to me the best for anything in humid areas. In humid in humid areas, if you guys have never seen um, what what we call guard text tape, this stuff is great. Um, this is. If you actually look up um, ballet tape, that's actually what this is for. It's like athletic ballet tape, so it doesn't stretch. Yeah. It's also called finger tape. Yeah. So it's, it's guard text finger tape, and what's nice about it is, look how breathable it is. And if, so I put my post in, I put one piece of white tape at the top, and then I use strips of this, always folding that little skin fold around. It seems to work for me, but you can, it actually breathes, and you can see, I can actually see her ears on it. it the stuff I buy comes in green and blue, but if you've never seen that before. I've never had one sore yeah. since that, since using that ever. I like to use it too. It's called like guard is, text. Is, there, is a sore or something like that? Cut like a piece of tape. Guard as in like a, like a, like a security yeah, guard? Dash T-E-X. So, <clears throat> but pass it around. If you've never seen it, it actually works really well. It allows the ears to breathe. And if you get tired of like when you pull your white tape off the ears and it's pulled all the hair out off the back of the ears, this doesn't pull the hair off the back of the ears. It sticks to itself. So are you putting this and then putting white tape over it? No. It's, it's nice That's it. See where you see the green on her or the yeah. blue? That's I wrap just a little bit of tape at the tip, going around very loosely once, and then go around the ear with the guard text. But you have to overlap it and squeeze it together because it sticks to itself. Amazon. It's like 25 bucks for a roll of 12. I mean, I would just rec I would recommend a pu puppy buyer buy a, a roll a, a roll of 12. So. Um, and they last forever. I mean, I can get yeah. one the roll. Only, the biggest problem with that stuff is it sticks, sticks to, to itself, itself and you so can't find the end. Don't tab it, you'll lose the whole roll. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah. This one got this one. Like you got chewed. Yeah, this one got rolled out of the bag and the yeah. puppy chewed it. <laughs> yeah. But I can still use it. It's so. the same outfit. It's like, I've, I've had to do that too. Yeah. Try to get it. There you go. Yeah, but you can still use it. Yeah. It's just going to be a little hard. But anybody, if, well, we're basically done, so if anybody wants to come up and see this stuff or has any other comments.